Okay, we're going to try the notes for 1B this way. Um, I, I've already gotten an email that says that you can't really read when I'm standing in front of the screen like that. So we're going to go back to this method. And uh, it's not as much fun. I don't get to do my usual song and dance. Uh, but at least you can see and hear what's going on. So uh, today in the notes, we will be dealing with parent functions. Uh, including this entire list. Uh, most of them you have already dealt with uh, when it comes to um, Math 2 and Math 3. You've already seen most of these as a parent function. Uh, as I recall, I think one of the um, uh, Khan Academies actually dabbles with the logarithm uh, as a parent function. And uh, so I, you may or may not have seen that and you may need to you know, kind of watch the video that goes along with the Khan Academy uh, uh, there. But uh, uh, I, I, I figured, you know, this is the honors part of the course that uh, uh, you, you needed to see logarithm curves as well. So uh, let's move on with example one. Uh, we were looking at the different choices here and uh, in many cases, uh, for instance, this first guy right here, x cubed, is definitely going to be the cubic form of uh, the curve. Um, now, you know, the question is, is this quadratic or exponential? We'll come back to it. This is definitely, you see the absolute value bars, and so this is going to be absolute value, which is f. Uh, this is what they look like as equations. Uh, y equals x, you could almost say y equals 1x plus 0. That is in the form of y equals mx plus b, which is definitely linear. Now over here, y equals x squared, that definitely gets the name quadratic. So we're going to call him the quadratic. Uh, up here in this corner, that is a square root that is over that x. And so this is definitely going to be the square root curve. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's not such a bad thing to go through and do the ones that are easy and then go back for the ones that are, are left over. Because uh, at this point, I've got B and C and E and F and G. So all that's left is constant and exponential. Well, I think the, uh, the, it's going to be obvious. This is your exponential. And by exponential, we're talking about where you have some number, you know, two, and then there's an x for the exponent. Uh, that's what makes it exponential is when you're unknown. Oh, great. You get to hear the cat throwing up. Anyway, um, oh, oh, oh. it's on the carpet. Great. Anyway, uh, we're going to press forward on this. Um, y equals two. And... Uh, that, if it's not exponential, then it need, it should be constant. And when you think about it, y equals 2 is a horizontal line where every point on there has 2 for a y value. That would sound pretty constant to me. So that one's going to be A. And all right, number 2, we are looking at matching uh, once again, but this time instead of equations, we're looking at graphs. Um, now, I'm hoping you recognize the guy on the right as the quadratic. So he is definitely C. And this looks like it almost was quadratic, except that one arm got turned down. That is definitely the thing that a cubic, y equals x cubed, is going to look like that. We'll mark him over here. Um, this guy, if you've played with them enough, you realize that if it's going to go up this way and up that way. This is what absolute values do. They make a perfect V. And so this would be the absolute value curve. And over here, you would not have seen it probably until math three, uh, but hopefully you recognize this as a square root curve. All right, so all we have left for the last three are A, B, and D. 
I will scroll down to these three, A, B, and D. Uh, a is the constant, which we said was, you know, like a horizontal or a vertical line. That's him. That looks like a perfectly straight line with a slope to it. That would be a linear function, which means that this must be D. That is what an exponential looks like. It comes ever so close to the, the x-axis where y is zero, but it never quite reaches that. And so that's what these should look like. Now, that much, you know, I would hope that you got from Math 2 and Math 3. Uh, that should have been review for you. Uh, now, this is the part that uh, may or may not give you a brain ache. Uh, when you're looking at charts like this and you're trying to determine which one of these, the real thing is to look for the pattern. Um, in, in the first one, it's like I add one between each level when I'm going from there to there, from there to there, and so on and so forth. I'm adding one all the way down on the axis. Meanwhile, on the Y's, when I'm going from one stop to the next, it's like it gets twice as big. It's like I'm multiplying by two, and I am. And if you'll notice the same thing with the fractions, it is also happening that one eighth times two gives me two eighths, which is one fourth, and so on and so forth. Now, here's a little trick for you in looking at these differences. Um, when you are adding, then you are probably multiplying like a linear equation. But if you are multiplying going down, then you are probably looking at an exponential. This would be the guy that is two to the x. Two to the zero is one. Two to the one is two. Two to the two is four. That is definitely exponential. We're gonna put a nice big D on top of that, because that is exponential. Now, I'm gonna switch colors so it's not quite so hard to look at. Um, I am hoping that as an honors class, you can look at those numbers, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and tell right away what they have in common. They're all perfect squares, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared. And yet when I go, down, go over here, it's like I'm adding 1 again, adding 1 between them, but it's like when I went from here to here, it's like whatever number that X started with, how did I get to Y? I had to take the square root of 16 to get 4. I had to take the square root of 25 to get 5. And so that tells me that this is a square root function and not the other way around. If it had been... Uh, uh, a quadratic, I would have had the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the left, and I would have had the 4, the 9, the 16, the 25 on the right. Because it is going backwards, so to speak, I am starting with the squares, and then suddenly they are undone. That's what a square root does. So this is definitely a square root chart. Now, let's look at the next one. It is, once again, adding 1 on each one of those. But here, I went from 9 to 4 to 1 to 0 to 1 to 4 to 9. That is also perfect squares, but wait a minute. 3 squared is 9. Negative 3, if I square all of it, also gives me 9. Negative 2, all of it squared, gives me 4. Uh, this is going in the other direction. Instead of unsquaring, these are indeed squaring, and of course, zero squared is zero. This is a quadratic. This is y equals x squared. All right, this guy on the end, uh, we'll go to orange. And of course, we have plus ones down the side. And down here, it is all twos. All twos. Now, we've actually seen that happen before. Um, when y was 2 in every case, 
that was the equation of y equals 2. That was a horizontal line. This is a constant. And all of the values are the exact same number, and they don't change. This is a constant function. Okay. Now we'll get on to the last three. Let's see now. We did A, C, D, and E. So I'm going to do A, C, D, and E. So that will narrow our choices, so to speak. And let's go up here and grab a different color. All right. Here we are doing plus ones. And here we are doing plus ones. Now remember when I said earlier that adding usually meant that you were multiplying? In this case, <laughs> it's one time, you know, negative two times one gives me negative two. Zero times one gives me zero. One times one gives me one. Um, this is actually y equals x. This is a linear equation. And we said that we get linear when it looks like we're adding down uh, uh, both sides, really. And uh, if we're adding the same number, then we're going to, that is actually going to wind up being our slope of uh, the equation. So this was a linear, which was B. Okay. And this guy, again, adding one in each case. And here, we were adding one. No, excuse me. We were subtracting one. Minus one, minus one, minus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. Now that tells you that your graph is going in a straight line in two different directions. Remember the V that you saw the graph of earlier? This is what's happening. On the left side of the V, it's going down negative one, negative one, negative one. But once you reach the bottom of the V and you come out the other side, it's going plus one, plus one, plus one. That V was a dead giveaway for absolute value. And when you think about it, the absolute value of negative three is positive three. The absolute value of positive three is positive three. So that one is going to be absolute value. Now you can kind of do some process of elimination, but let's look at the numbers here. You're going from 3 to negative 27, from 2 to 8, from positive 2 to positive 8, from 3 to positive 27. Um, those are perfect cubes. 3 cubed is 27. 2 cubed is 8. Um, I made mention of this in the original video, um, but uh, you definitely, it is in your best interest to have your perfect squares memorized up through maybe about 20 and your perfect cubes memorized up through about 10 uh you know because you're i oh trust me you are going to run across these numbers again and again and again and if you don't recognize them then it's going to take you a minute on the calculator to try and figure out you know what is 343 where have i seen that before well that's seven cubed where have I seen 216 before? Oh, that's six cubed. And so the more that you recognize these numbers, because uh, they will be popping up all over the place uh, for the rest of the year, really. And uh, the more that you recognize them from memorization, uh, the easier it becomes. So I would say with this course, uh, like I say, the squares, I'd go up through maybe 20. 20 squared is 400. Um, 17 squared is 289, and so on and so forth. Um, and for the cubes, I'd go up to maybe 10. Uh, that would be to your benefit. All right, I think that is the end of the notes. It is. And so uh, I will post this as an alternate to what I did on the board. Um, and I don't know, maybe we will have to go uh, this route from here on out. Uh, I really had hoped to be able to do live video, uh, but if you can't read it, uh, it doesn't do me any good.